Hi, welcome to this Alchemist Chemistry A-level video looking at the structure of benzene. In this video we're going to explore what the structure of benzene actually is and also look at the evidence which supports the structure of benzene being what we have now discovered. But let's start with the basics. Benzene has the molecular formula C6H6. It is a cyclic molecule which means it's a ring molecule and finally it is planar which means it is a flat molecule like the plane of a piece of paper. The benzene structure is a hexagonal ring of six covalently bonded carbon atoms. Each individual carbon atom has formed two sigma bonds to two adjacent carbon atoms and one sigma bond to an adjacent hydrogen atom. That means that each carbon atom has therefore formed three sigma bonds per carbon atom. And if you've forgotten what a sigma bond is, a sigma bond is the head-on overlap between two atomic orbitals to form a single covalent bond. So far, nothing here has indicated that benzene is a particularly special molecule, but it really is. Hopefully you remember that carbon is a tetravalent atom, i.e. it has four outer shell electrons. We only use three of those to form the three sigma bonds around each carbon atom. That means that each carbon atom has one electron that hasn't been accounted for, which we're going to talk about now. So what I've done is I've redrawn our hexagonal ring of carbon atoms, but I've removed the hydrogen atoms for simplicity so we can really zone in on what those carbon atoms are doing. So each carbon atom, as you can see, has one vertical p orbital that has one electron occupying it. So in other words, each carbon atom has one electron occupying a p orbital that is perpendicular to the plane of the bonded carbon atoms. In other words, these p orbitals are at right angles to the rest of the molecule. That's really important because this is what's going to create what is known as the delocalized ring structure of the benzene molecule. What can happen at this point is each p orbital overlaps sideways with the two neighboring p orbitals adjacent, forming pi bonds, a bit like this. And now you can see we have those overlapping p orbitals either side of the carbons, creating a continuous ring of electron density, both above and below the plane of the molecule itself. So these lines represent the overlaps between the p orbitals creating a pi bonding system. So this results in the creation of an extended delocalized pi bonding system both above and below the plane of the molecule, otherwise known as a delocalized ring system. Now this is a good diagram, but maybe it's better represented like this. Now you can see I converted the diagram into electron density diagram. We have rings of electron density both above and below the plane of the molecule. And what that's trying to imply is that these electrons are no longer associated with any one carbon. Instead, they're forming a ring of charge both above and below the plane of the molecule, which is known as a delocalized ring. In these diagrams, you can see the evolution of our thought process, running from the most simple picture, we just show the hexagonal ring structure itself with each carbon having one vertical p orbital ready to overlap. Our second diagram showing the overlapping of those p orbitals on each carbon with the two adjacent carbon atoms to form our extended pi bonding system. Then we move on to our electron density diagram showing the uh, delocalized ring structure that the electrons are not associated with any one carbon but are producing this uh, extended region of charge both above and below the plane of the molecule. All of these quite complex diagrams. So when it comes to drawing a benzene ring structure, skeletally, all we draw is a hexagonal carbon structure with a ring at the center to emphasize the presence of the delocalized ring itself. Now, it hasn't always been the case that we understood the nature of the structure of benzene. In fact, the first proposed structure of benzene was quite different. It was this structure on the right, known as cyclohexa 135 triene. This was proposed by the German chemist August Kekulé in 1865. Now we need to know the evidence that helps support our existing knowledge that benzene has this structure on the left and which counteracts the possibility of it being known as a Kekulé structure, which is the structure on the right. So we're going to look at the case study, or the case if you like, as to why benzene most definitely is this and why benzene most definitely is not this structure on the right known as a Kekulé structure. We'll start with the evidence provided by the reactivity of benzene. Now, if benzene were the Kekulé structure or cyclohexa 135 triene, well then if we added bromine water to it, 
it will undergo an atrophic addition because the cyclohexa 135 triene has three true double bonds. These will be able to effectively polarize the approaching bromine molecules, creating a electrophilic head, if you like, or electrophilic area. These will attract electron density from the true double bond, breaking the bromine molecule in the process. This would allow the bromine atoms and bromide ion to add in to this Kekulé structure, and this would cause the bromine water to decolorize as a result. And this would be an effective electrophilic addition mechanism. But when we add bromine water to benzene, we find that it does not decolorize. This would suggest that an electrophilic addition mechanism is not taking place. This is evidence to counteract the Kekulé structure being correct and support that our benzene structure is our delocalized ring structure as we suspected. Our next set of evidence comes from X-ray crystallography, which provides information about the bond lengths found within various molecules. Now the bond length of a carbon-carbon double bond is approximately 0.134 nanometers, and the bond length of a carbon-carbon single bond is approximately 0.154 nanometers. So if the Kekulé structure were correct, we'd find these alternating bond lengths within our benzene ring. However, when we undertake X-ray crystallography of a true benzene ring structure, we don't find either of these bond lengths. Instead, we find the bond length is approximately 0.139 nanometers. Now this is intermediary between the other two bond lengths, and that's helping to provide supporting evidence that we don't have an alternating single and double bond structure. Instead, we have our extended pi bonding delocalized ring structure, which gives this bond length instead. And our final piece of evidence comes from the study of thermodynamics and thermodynamic experimentation. When we hydrogenate cyclohexene, which is a hexagonal carbon-based molecule with one carbon-carbon double bond to form a saturated molecule of cyclohexane in the process, we find the reaction is exothermic. Specifically, it releases minus 120 kilojoules per mole of energy when the reaction takes place. Now, if a benzene ring truly was cyclohexa 135 triene, that's a very similar molecule to cyclohexene, except rather than having one carbon-carbon double bond, it has three carbon-carbon double bonds. It stands the reason it will release three times as much energy in its exothermic reaction. In other words, we get minus 360 kilos per mole of energy released, if that's what a benzene ring structure was like. But when we actually hydrogenate a true benzene ring structure, we find it only releases minus 208 kilojoules per mole. So what's going on here? It would appear that the hydrogenation of benzene is less exothermic than we would expect. And what's going on here? We think about this in terms of Bendamex, it does make sense. Bendamex means that breaking bonds is an endothermic process, whilst making bonds is an exothermic process. And if this reaction is less exothermic than expected, it's implying that more energy is being expended breaking bonds and is therefore more energy going to the endothermic process. More energy is required, which is implying that the bonding in benzene must be stronger than the bonding in the Kekulé structure. And in fact, benzene is 152 kilojoules per mole more thermodynamically stable than the Kekulé structure would predict. This is due to the additional stability and strength provided by the delocalized ring structure itself, known as delocalization energy. So benzene's reaction is less exothermic, implying that benzene is a more stable structure than the Kekulé structure would be. And there you have it, folks. That's taken us on the full cycle of a journey through the structure of benzene and the evidence supporting that that is the right conclusion for the structure of benzene. As always, thank you so much for listening to the end. I hope you found the video both useful and enjoyable. And if you found the video useful, please think about giving it a like. You can subscribe to the channel. Your support is always hugely appreciated. Thank you, as always. Take care. Bye now.